Hello, and welcome to the New York Jewish Film Festival. I'm Aviva Weintraub. I'm director of the festival from the Jewish Museum. And the festival is co-presented every year in January by the Jewish Museum and Film at Lincoln Center. This year, we're really excited to be showing a wonderful documentary called Grossman. And I'm thrilled to have with me to discuss the film, the film's director, Adi Arbel, and producer, Arik Bernstein. Um, both of you are joining from Israel. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Maybe we can start by you talking about how the project came to be. How did it, whose idea, who was involved in the beginning? Can you talk a bit about that? The idea came up actually, um, actually quite a, two or three, one or two months before David was um, about to go to Croatia for the session that he does for, this was his third time, his third book, the session that he does with his uh, translators. And this came up, the idea came up uh, his last book, but this time he was all for it and the translators agreed and we managed to get together pretty quickly. Um, this came through a, uh, a Diz, uh, David's uh, uh, literary agent, Deborah Harris, and through my partner, uh, uh, Dudu Silber, and then Adi joined in and we said, okay, let's, first of all, let's go to Croatia and spend almost a week with David and the translator from morning to evening and during, you know, after that. And uh, I, I'll just say before, you know, Adi picks up, because that's really what happened, is that there was some kind of wishful thinking on the on, on 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 behalf of David and on behalf of our broadcaster that will come back with the film, and then we'll just have to spend a couple of weeks in the editing room and whoops we'll have a film, but that's not exactly what happened, and then Adi could tell how it didn't happen. Well. Uh... For many years, David uh, really didn't want to, to take a part in a personal film. Uh, he did agree, as Arik said, to, uh, to participate in this translator's uh, session. He said it's a very unique uh, event and uh, you can shoot this. And then I just asked uh, whether we can uh, have an interview with him. So he said, okay, I can speak with you for a few hours only about literature. So we start talking about writing and literature. And of course it was about life and uh, literature is life and life is literature. And that's how it started. But uh, it took us uh, each time we felt, Arik and I, that we're going forward with him and backwards. And it was a very uh, slow uh, dynamic. Uh, it's true that after this uh, week of shooting in uh, Croatia, uh, he was, we already had trust and friendship and he knew it's, it's okay to put the film in our hands. But still, uh, he's a very um, kept and reserved person. Um, and he's very discreet with his personal life. So it took us time. Uh, but as... Uh, as you see in the film, uh, it paid off to to go this to walk this way with him. It was a slow one. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's wonderful. So so, how much time um, did you were you able? How long did the process take? Let's say from Croatia to the, the finished product. Product. Two years. It took two okay. years. Wow. Altogether, two years. Um, and we also had we also had Corona in the middle. Don't forget. Oh my God! So we had a date to go to David's house and do some filming, and then it was postponed by another week and another quarantine, whatever. So that also slowed us down. Wow. He he really comes across in the film as the gentlest 
person in the world, really very, um, like you said, reserved, but at the same time, like a beautiful soul. Um, it, it must have been hard to choose what to keep in the film um, and what not to use. Is, is that correct? Completely. <laughs> totally agree with you. Yeah. I think in many documentaries, that's the problem in the end, how, how you how you can still tell uh, one story out of all these anecdotes and different stories. Um, I think my, my main interest was with all the relations that he has since childhood with uh, all the death subject and how he deals with it in the books and in his life. And I always aim to, to go and speak with him about this subject. Uh, when he saw the, for this, I think the third time he saw the rough cut, he understood what I was trying to tell about him, mm. uh, which is good. I didn't want him to know in advance because it would change anything. Uh, he's very smart and he sees everything and he, he sees through persons. <laughs> um, but after, I think it was the third time that he saw the rough cut, he told me, now I understand uh, what you are trying, which story you are trying to tell about me. Um, it I, was really... I can say from, you know, at the... <clears throat> You know, Adi saw David three, I saw about 30. And I think the main thing I could just say for Adi is not only to help you take a hundred hours and making it into one, but what story really Adi wanted to tell. That's the main issue. So it's not only a matter of editing, it's a matter of writing of, of, of what's, you know, what, because we could have told a different story, right Adi? I mean, it could have been a different film. We yes. have to go for two or three types of film. Completely, but still the, the story behind the, to the end of the land, the story behind this book that he writes this book while his son Uri is in the army. Uh, it's uh, such a unique universal story when, Reality reaches uh, the the literature and they collapse one to each other. It's 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 beyond imagination. This story, and I knew we must have it in the film because it, it's uh, it's a myth, mythical story. I mean, uh, so from the beginning I knew that uh, the story, this story, must be in the film about David Grossman. Yes. And I, maybe you can, uh, he's very well known here in, in the States, in New York. Um, and I, I imagine he's, um, that it's hard for him to walk down the street in Israel, that uh, everyone knows who he is. Is, is, that, is that accurate? And um, what was it like? Or maybe you only really interviewed him inside. Uh, is he is he as famous as I think he is in Israel? I guess I'm I'm not talking about fame like movie star fame, but my my impression is that when um, when the tragedy happened, when his son was killed, that um, really the entire country felt it and and knew about it. Um, do you think that's true? in Israel, Adi? I, I think uh, the whole country, it's, it's a small place, Israel, and he's very known here. And he's like the voice of Israel in a way. Yes. When this tragedy happened, I think the whole country was with him and with them. Uh, and, and and still nowadays, uh... and you know it's 
<clears throat> it's strange with David because, you know, this is kind of a weird country, as some of you might realize by now. What happens with David is that, you know, he's <clears throat> very much a left-wing uh, protester, it's, and he doesn't hide it. And in many ways, you know, in Israel, it's weird, but the fact that his son died in a war kind of, I don't know how to say this delicately, but kind of gave him a, a kosher stamp. I mean, he can say whatever he wants now. Wow. He paid his dues one million times over. And he can say whatever he wants. And that gave him, and, uh, uh, you know, what he thinks at home with his wife is a different story. But publicly, he is very open, uh, always was, and probably will be. I mean, that's, that's who he is. Israel is, likes to call him uh, and to give him the, um, the job of a prophet, and he really doesn't like it. But yeah. each uh, few years, it comes back. Even now in the COVID, he wrote a very uh, important article uh, just when we started, and it has this uh, echo of a prophet. So even... He's very modest and he doesn't like it. It happens each time. Uh, he feels that there are certain things he must say. Yes. Yeah. And they and they echo around the country and he runs away from from this uh, definition and he finally it keeps on. I, it was very moving that you had the footage of the press conference of. Um, the three writers of David Grossman, Amos Oz, and A.B. Yehoshua. Um, can you talk about that press conference a little bit? Um, it was one of these treasures that you find when you make a visual archive research. Uh, there were many. Many are not in the film, and I... <laughs> I'm the only one to keep on thinking about the the other treasures that we couldn't use in order to 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 tell one story, coherent story. Um, there is the the certain moments in this uh, press conference when he's quiet, when you you can see in his eyes that he's thinking about his son about the war now. Um, it's really seconds. We even um, use the slow motion for, for this to, to really to have the chance to grasp it. It's, it's moment, uh, but he, his eyes tells everything there. And uh, one of the most important uh, approach in this film for me was to, to to succeed through his, there are many close-ups of him, very close, very uh, gentle. Um, I really felt uh, all during the shooting is uh, his look, his eyes, and that he's studying me, not less not than I'm studying him. Mm. Uh, and I think that uh, it's, a, it's a strong moment in, if people would watch this conference without uh, the context of all his uh, close-ups in the film, it would feel different. But you already feel that uh, you uh, so intimate with him, that you know him from so closely, from, for, from so many close-ups in the film, yes. that, uh, that you see the change. And uh, after the, this, the, the tragedy with uh, his son killed, you can see the change uh, on his face, like he grew older, older, the face looks different. Uh, it's obvious, but it's really strong to, um, to see it, really see it on his close up uh, in, in, in one film, in one hour. Yes. It's all these things that goes uh, beyond the, the words. He's, he's so good with words, but I wanted to add something that you can see, not uh, only yeah. to listen to. Um, he says something about 
something to the effect that um, the truly important things in life happen in the kitchen or, you know, in, in uh, bedrooms, in the bedroom, in the kitchen. Um, and I, I think you did a wonderful job of conveying um, that, that worldview. Um, can you, is there anything you could say about that, about his approach? Um, when we just started the film, we were thinking of uh, maybe shooting him in a studio on green screen and then change uh, uh, all the behind. And he, he, lie, he, he stood on the side and let me, me and Ari deal with with all this uh, visual approach and wanting to do something uh, different and maybe he reads from the books and you see uh, all kind of uh, background change. And just at the end of this process, he heard all this approach and he told me, but how can you speak with me in a cold studio? It must be in my house, in my study room, in my kitchen. Uh, I need a warm place uh, for our talks, for this dialogue. And so like this flew all our <laughs> concepts of <laughs> uh, And he was yeah. right, of course. Go ahead. No, I said he was right, of course. It's, it it, it yeah. could only happened that way. And also, you know, for for Aviva, for your question before about the the news conference that you talked about, because yes. the story of David and his writing and the book and the scene of the press conference with uh, Yoshua and Oz, and then his son. If if somebody would have brought me a script, I'd say, you know, that's nonsense. I mean, it's impossible. <laughs> and it is, it, it, it's really, it, it's Shakespearean. I mean, this is, it's unbelievable that this happened. So it kind of, um, and, and you know, we, and, and I think something again, for me, it was great because Adi, you know, Adi would say, I, I had the luxury of seeing the film once a week, not every minute. <laughs> And suddenly you feel that when you see, you know, Uwe as a three-year-old kid, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, fuck, in 20 years, he's going to be gone. I mean, that's something that, uh, yes. that's, that's, I think it's a great achievement that Adi did, that you kind of, you plant this kind of memory that the people have of, you know, even if it's 45 minutes earlier in the film, you know, what's going to be with this little brilliant little kid and that, you know, breaks your heart from <laughs> long before it really happens. Yeah, absolutely. On the way back from Croatia from this uh, week of shooting, it was the first time that uh, uh, David told me, okay, the, you can mention Uri in the film. Mm. That's how we, <laughs> We proceed in uh, in this film. Yeah. No, uh, it wasn't obvious from the first moment. Uh, yeah, that that must have been so difficult um, for him to talk about in that way. Yeah, it was. There's there's a moment um, to go back to the workshop with the translators, which is such a fantastic idea. Um, and there, there's a moment where he says something like that it's exciting and maybe moving for him to think about the fact that what he writes will be um, read in so many different languages and so many different countries. And um, it, it's almost like um, a, a pride um, and yet I think you do a tremendous job, a wonderful job of showing, you know, the the reach of his work and the power and how important it is to so many people. And also the idea of coming back to the home that the really important things 
like we said, um, happen in a in a quiet, private, domestic space. And um, I think the the translator scene is the one where we see him most interacting um, with with other people. Um, it's it's such a great idea, uh, and I'm. It's interesting to know that that's in a way where the film started um, mm -hmm. with, with the translator's workshop. Um, did, when you felt that you might be moving away from that being the center of the film, although it's, it's still very important and, and fascinating, um, did you have a kind of shift in orientation towards the project then? Um, I watched again and again and again uh, the shooting days there. And there are, until the last rough cast, I tried to, um, to put more of it in the film, to see it more, but um, it's, it, it's one of the things, it, it's a professional discussion with lots of love and uh, important issues. But finally I told myself if, if I would go uh, to see a film about David Grossman and, and, and just have this, uh, I, would be this I would be disappointed. Mm. Uh, I would want more. Um, I, always tell, I always tell Arik that we should uh, do a, a different short film about the translation because there's <laughs> magic there. Um, and I feel frustrated that I couldn't uh, show more of this magic, but it's a different film I really believe now. And where, I know that this film has been, was in the Dakaviv Film Festival. Um, where, how has it been shown in Israel? Was it shown widely or? Yeah, it was shown in Dakaviv, it was shown on television. Okay. On channel, channel 11, which is the public channel. And many, many screenings. Um, online, online. online. But many, you know, community centers with a talk, without a talk, et cetera, et cetera. But actually international, internationally, you're the first. Uh, right, that's great. We're, is, proud. We're proud to be here. This is a, a, a world premiere. If you put Israel aside, this is the international premiere. All right, that's that's wonderful. I Many of his Israeli readers came to see the film at uh, Doc Aviv and on TV, and they wanted to see it twice, three times. Uh, lots of his admirers really enjoyed the film. They wow, came. that's it great. It became a film that people uh, see for, for a few times. His latest book which is translated into English, More Than I Love My Life, which is actually the book that we see in the film being translated and the opening scene when David goes to the, um, to the camp, the concentration camp, which the film takes place, um, came out in both in New York and in London a few months ago. I think the uh, yes. art came out in August and I think the paperback came out later like it usually does. I think in September, October, the uh, paperback came out. Yes, great. And I'll just mention the title again is More Than I Love My Life. Right. D David Grossman's newest book. Right, Random House. He he's the only writer in the world that uh, does this uh, translation, yeah. translation session with the translator. That He reads them all the book from cover to cover and they speak about it and they ask questions. Uh, it's really unique. Wow, that, that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Ginter Grass used to do it. That's what they say. But uh, oh. now only David Grossman then. Yeah. Reads with his translators. Great. Well, it's so, you know, the. He's, 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 he knows how to read. I mean, this is something which is very important to him and to the audience. I mean, you know, he spent 
years and years and years and years on the radio. So I mean, he knows how to tell a story, not only in writing, but he's a performer. <laughs> yeah, that was really fascinating to learn about that, his long involvement um, with mm -hmm. the radio and as the reading the news as well. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with us about the film, the future? <laughs> <laughs> would, it, would have been nice to be with you guys in New York. Oh, we wish, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to make plans these days, right? Yeah, yeah, it's too bad. Yeah. All right. Yes. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us on Zoom. Thank you. Thank lovely. you. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>